Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining tonight's Farm Advisory Service meeting. My name is Mary Jane Laurie. I'm an agricultural consultant in the Edinburgh office covering the Lothians. Um, tonight, we're talking about choosing the right financial software for your farming business. Uh, no, we're not. That's... <laughs> That's the wrong slide at the start, Neil. Good job. We're talking about choosing the right arable software for your farming business. This is the second in a series of three meetings, and we've already done the, the financial one already. So if you're interested in looking back at what we talked about for financial software, you'll be able to find that webinar, which was recorded um, on our YouTube channel. If you search FAS TV, you will find um, under there, you'll find webinars with, with a link to that one. So you can catch up on that. Our third and final meeting, which is in November, is about livestock software. So we'll also be covering that. If you've got livestock on your farm, keep an eye out for the date for that one. So tonight, as I say, we're talking about arable software. The reason we started this project is we got a lot of questions from farmers about which is the best software for their farming business. And is there a software package that can do everything? The short answer is there is not one that does everything for the entire business. You often find that there's good financial packages, but they don't link in with um, arable or livestock software. So we decided to split it into the three and tonight we're focusing on the arable, but some of the packages that we're talking about, I think one of the packages we're talking about tonight does also have a livestock part to it as well. So there are a few packages out there that will do more than one thing. So it's worth bearing in mind, depending on what systems you've got at home on your farm. So tonight I'm joined by my colleague, Neil Melville from SAC Consulting, who's going to talk us through the things to consider when choosing um, arable farm software. He'll also summarize some of the main programs available and their fe features. And then finally, we're joined by Hamish Nottenbelt from Peace Hill Farm in Fife. And he's gonna tell us about his farm, the arable software he uses and how it benefits his system. As we're going through, feel free to ask questions. So there's a chat box and a Q&A box feel free to put your question in either of those. And if it's okay, we'll deal with those at the very end. Okay, so over to you, Neil. Hi, so as Mary said, I am Neil Melville. I'm a consultant with the SEC in the Cooper office. I have been based there for 12 years. Uh, previous to that, I have experience in field brassica production and farm management. As a consultant, I am involved in cereal and grassland agronomy, some practical farm management, and the usual range of on completion and grant applications. Different types of farm management software um, we see quite a lot um, on different farms, but I'm no expert in the software types, but I can generally work my way through uh, problems and questions that folk have with uh, with their software, um, so long as they've entered the information uh, into the software correctly in the first place. So the basis of having farm management software is that you, as a farmer, you have um, a large requirement to keep records, basically. Um, so for the arable uh, side of things, I just Put a few things this is quite a busy slide but basically the uh, good place to start looking for what records uh, you require to keep um, is the pet for code which is the top picture or uh, if you're wanting to try and avoid breaches for basic payment penalties then go on to rural payments and the cross compliance inspection pages uh, tell you large amount of detail on what records uh, you need to keep for livestock um, crops and everything like that. So from the rural payment website to meet statutory management requirements, uh, a business must keep up to date records on all of the following if they're relevant to your business and make them available on request to inspect. So veterinary medical products or other treatments given to your animals, including dates of treatment and withdrawal period. Use of plant protection products and biocides. The results of any analysis carried out on samples taken from food producing animals, plants, animal feed, or other samples taken for diagnostic purposes that have importance for human and animal health. Any relevant reports on checks carried out on animals or products of animal origin and any use of genetically modified seeds in feed production. Pesticide records must be recorded and kept on file for five years. 
NVZ plans, um, if you're in an NVZ zone, uh, you'll know you will be by now because they've been around for decades. Uh, NVZ plan records and all associated applications of fertilizer, they must be kept on file for three years. So other records that are required, uh, most of what we previously said will come up uh, if you're in Scottish quality crops or red tractor um, assurance schemes, but other things that you should keep records of that definitely come up in crop assurance is firm and control records and all the associated maps, irrigation water test results for some of the fresh produce, integrated pest management plan, which is quite a big thing for crop assurance uh, and red tractor as well. Grain store hygiene and cleaning records. Um, sprayer MOT record is one of the ones that keeps coming up and some folk uh, don't have a record of, but it's quite easy to get. Um, so the, the list I've just mentioned doesn't include everything, but if you go on to your crop assurance website, whichever one is relevant to you, there is a detailed guidance, which um, not enthralling reading, but important nevertheless to make sure that you're not going to be in breach. So during my work week, basically, the main management software that I use is, well, I was being busy calling it muddy boots or green light grower management. And then when I was preparing this presentation, I see it's now called TELUS Farm Management, but basically we will refer to it as green light. So it is an arable um, package. Uh, you could log the field data for individual farms or as we use it for our agronomy, anyone that we rock, walk crops for, I list all of their fields uh, into the database uh, under individual farmer files. And then when I'm walking crops and I scout the fields for um, weed control or fungicides and things like that, I then come back into the office and enter what I uh, found and then make the spray recommendation. And then I can email the recommendation out to either the, just to the farm email address or direct some clients direct to um, some appliances that then speak to the actual sprayer. Um, the good things about green light that I found is it's easy to use once field and crop information is uploaded. The uploading process for recording fields and drawing the boundaries can take a little while, but it's worth doing. Um, other things are crop legal chemicals are constantly updated on the database in the background, so recommendations shouldn't be able to go out without being audited to check that they're current and there's no breaches. And as I said earlier, uh, you can email it direct to the farmer or sprayer operator. Uh, as an agronomist, the reports page uh, is very useful uh, for end of the year reports. Um, but as a farm manager as well, I use it for um, yield data, cost and analysis of uh, inputs that have gone on to the crop because you can, you can record field activities or say you were a farm manager receiving the spray lines. The, once they are done, you just go into the activities and enter all the, or if you've got the, the handheld app, you, it will be entered that the spraying activity has taken place on such and such a date in certain spray condition, that's all recorded. And at the whenever you're getting your crop assurance inspection, you can just download all that information for the crops so that you've got it on file or to hand for when you've got the inspector. Um, so you can also, as I said, produce handy maps that are filtered by crop or field operation, and they can be given out to um, sprayer operators or some one of uh, an STC advisor coming in, say, to do a, a field report for something. And if you can give him a map, that makes things a lot simpler. So 
Other software packages are available. So I just went through what I commonly use, but um, we have gathered together a list that's there on the screen of other arable based software packages that people can buy and use. So the list is Geofolia, Greenlight, or Hellsfar Man, who we've already mentioned, FarmWise, Gatekeeper, and Farm Matters. But not being a salesman for the previous mentions, I thought I'd better go through uh, and give everyone a fair shout. So I'll go through the, the basic operations of each of these packages that we've that we've mentioned. I'll not go back through green light because I think we went through it in, pretty in detail. Um, so as I progress, we will go to Geofolio, which is uh, an integrated farm mapping with rural payment imports. Uh, you can do interfield mapping, update records and stocks from your phone, Satellite crop image analysis, nutrient management planning, agronomist recommendation imports, Lex Agri pesticide and fertilizer database, financial reporting by field, crop and farm. Regular, you get regular software updates. It's PC or web to install. You can get optional extras, which would include smartphone or tablet app, multi-user and multi-stock centered. The initial fee for a 150 hectare farm is 1150 pounds, and then a monthly fee of 32 pounds 91. Next one is farm wise, which uh, starts from 29 pounds a month. It uh, can store up to 10 years of individual and multi farm data, including field and crop records, as well as fertilizer and spray records, costs, soil analysis, and field operations. It uses the latest nutrient management guide and can provide a nutrient management plan, fertilizer recommendations, field and farm nutrient balance, and manure management plan. You can compare your farm data inputs and outputs to improve productivity. Uh, and it will demonstrate compliance with environmental regulations and standards such as NDZ and rules for water. It has a handy helpline email support, but it doesn't have a YouTube tutorial which helps you set it up. Next is Gatekeeper, which is part of Farm Plan. So Gatekeeper has a £323 annual cost for farms up to 249 hectares. It has multi-user ability. Um, it can exchange data with your agronomist, connect to leading precision farming devices and services, compliant click of a button, record on the go and produce an instant report, demonstrating legislative compliance from field audits to stock and nutrient management. Manage all cropping activities in one place, assign these jobs to the operator and update field to field, monitor weather and product information. You can monitor stock and produce records and record yield sales and contracts. And you can add farm mapping, precision farming target and actual budgets uh, and various other uh, additions can be purchased to add on. It's cloud and desktop based, but um, and there is a handy helpline and online demos. Um, finally, Farm Matters is uh, £225 a year, and it's a livestock and crop package. It has good online tutorial videos. It has a telephone and email support and a web-based app for the cattle and sheep event recording. That is pretty much the packages that we have managed to get information on. There will be other packages out there. Um, there's constantly new software being produced and trialed. We, these were the just a few that we managed to gather together. But basically, that is my talk. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Neil. Um, as I say, if anyone has any questions, feel free to, to type them into the Q&A box or the chat box and we'll we'll answer them at the end. So as I said at the start, we're also joined by Hamish, um, who is going to talk us through his farm and um, the package that he uses, why he uses it, the benefits and, and those sorts of things. So over to you, Hamish. Um, cool. OK. Um... Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Hamish Nottingbelt. I'm the arable farm manager at Peace Hill Farm. Uh, we're up in northeast Fife, um, growing a wide range of crops um, and a few different enterprises, which we'll just have a run through. Um, and then I was going to talk about one of the the farm management uh, softwares that we use on the farm and the kind of pros and cons to that. Um, and then yeah, we'll get questions at the end, and hopefully I can answer those um on the software that we use certainly so um at peace hill we've got quite a lot going on um including so um yeah i look after these top three enterprises basically so all the the arable side of the business um which is arable cropping uh crops for our anaerobic digester um which is rye and energy beet and vegetable crops as well uh brassicas uh, broccoli cauliflower and brussels sprouts uh, we also have a poultry enterprise, um, which is a, a broiler set up. Um, so we have a poultry manager and also an anaerobic digester on site, which is uh, half owned by the Peace Hill Farm owner as well. Um, so the arable cropping um, setup kind of consists of a six year rotation. Uh, which generally runs in the following order of brassicas, veg, which I mentioned, so broccoli, cauliflower, sprouts, uh, followed by winter wheat usually, and then into rye as a second cereal. Um, then potatoes after that, back into rye, followed by energy beet, um, which is spring sown as well. Um, the rotation varies a little bit based on soil type, location, uh, time of harvest, etc., um, some of the rotation includes carrots as well uh, and parsnips. Um, also with rye in the rotation, we've got a great opportunity to put in greening crops, um, cover crops, catch crops, uh, trap crops for pests, etc. So the rye is harvested in July, which gives a great window for, for getting a good green cover sown and established in good time. Um, and we also get lambs, fat lambs in, um, to run on veg stubble uh, and our green crops um, and also our sometimes our forward cereals that are sown early and um, we like to get some sheep on them to to graze them down um, and that's also part of our kind of regeneration part of the rotation as well including livestock so the ad cropping consists of winter rye and energy beet uh, so we grow 600 acres of our own uh, rye, which is generally sown in September, October, um, after potatoes, wheat, sometimes veg, as I mentioned. Um, and we also take in 600 acres approximately from neighbours. So there'll be six or seven neighbours who grow rye for us. And we, uh, we're in charge. They, so they're in charge of growing that crop. And we're in charge of chopping it, uh, harvesting it. Um, and then we basically pay them by the ton. So it's in it's in everyone's interest to to grow a good yield of rye, them and us. Um, and then yeah, three hundred and thirty acres of energy beet, which is essentially a uh, sugar beet varieties, which have been slightly modified slash cleverly marketed as an energy beet. Um, so they've got different dry matter characteristics and energy levels and things like that. Um, so we started harvesting that actually just last week and um, so early to mid october harvest right through to uh mid to late april so it's quite a long harvest window um and that gets fed into the ad plant as well so that's two of the crops that go into the plant as well as other feedstocks and um, such as the hen pen from our broiler enterprise which is um yeah quite a large tonnage of hen pen so i think we use about 70 to 80 percent of the hen pen that's produced um goes into the ad plant and then the rest of it's available up for our uh, crops um the plant also produces obviously quite a lot of uh, byproduct 
So digest it in a liquid form and solid form. Um, so they're they're very good fertilizers. Um, both very high in potash, which a lot of Scottish soils can be low in. Um, our indices have actually crept up pretty high in potash, which is quite unusual for our area. Um, so yeah, it's a good fertilizer. We use a solid digestate in front of root crops, um, veg, and then the liquid digestate is spread using a dribble bar on all of our cereals, uh, and sometimes on kind of cultivated land and stubble ahead of crops as well. Uh, so next part of the cropping business is the brassicas. Um, so there's just over 16, 600 acres total of brassicas. Um, so they all are all marketed through East of Scotland Growers, which is a, a grower-owned cooperative, um, which has been on on the go for a long time. Neil will know better how long it's been on the go. Um, I should have said, sorry, I've been with Peace Hill for the last four years. Um, so yeah, the brassicas, um, overwinter cauliflower, which is planted in July, August, harvested from March the next year until June. Uh, so that's quite a spread out harvest. And then summer, autumn cauliflower, 260 acres of that. And then we have processing crops as well. So broccoli and cauliflower for freezing. So um, the bottom picture there, it's quite hard to see the scale of that, but those broccoli heads are, um, yeah, they wouldn't be far off the size of my laptop that I'm looking at actually. So they're big, big broccoli heads and they're floretted. So chopped up into little floret chunks and then, um, then they go to get frozen between the months of um, July and kind of November time, uh, frozen into packs for the freezing market. Um, and then a new venture for us this year is actually Brussels sprouts. So we're trying 60 acres of that. Um, they were planted in April and they're, yeah, they're looking fairly good. Um, they're looking all right, but we'll see when harvest comes next month. So it's quite a long season. It's basically year round, to be honest, on the brassicas. So we're planting crops from March to August and we're harvesting crops at the same time from March all the way through to early December, um, all of the above crops. So the farm software um, we're using is um, green light, as Neil likes to call it, or muddy boots, or, well, it's no longer muddy boots. So. We'll just call it green light. We've always called it that as well. Um, there's a lot of features. Admittedly, I probably don't use all of the features to their full potential by any means. Um, so I was just going to run through a few examples of what we use it for and then kind of pros and cons. Um, but yeah, as I say, there's a lot more on it that, that should and could be explored. Um, so it's good for field maps. You see the top picture there, that's like, field boundaries of land that we or the business owns and rents over, well, I think that's actually a map of all the, the fields that we've rented since we've had green light. So um, like the historic maps and stuff too. Um, spray records is mostly what we use it for. Um, so I produce the, the spray plan with the chemicals, uh, water rates, nozzle choice, all the rest of it and then i can send that directly to our um the app which is on the sprayers the sprayer operator's ipad so he gets the rec sent directly to him he knows exactly what to put in the sprayer and when he's completed that job he can type in the weather conditions and say that he's completed it um, and then that's it's basically paperless which is a big pro of this uh, software um so costings as well, chemical costs can all be put in very easily. Um, and fertilizer costs as well, basically any products which you use, you can allocate a price to them and it comes up in your plans and then um, in your kind of end of year, um, end of harvest reports, et cetera, you can generate margins and all the rest of it. Um, so on the costings, I would say the more you put in, the more you get out. Definitely. So you can actually put in every field operation from plowing, fertilizer, digestate, whatever um, you do in that field, you can allocate a field operation and a cost. 
Um, and then you can input your yield and obviously the crop value or price at harvest, and it'll produce a, a kind of margin report, etc. cetera. Um, as I said, spray, fertilizer plans, and then agronomy records as well. Um, and the big one at the bottom is compliance. Like it's um, obviously a huge value to have all of your operations uh, saved and backed up in one place. So it's really good for that, uh, including NVZ records. A couple of things I didn't actually put on there, which we use it for are um, sometimes soil sample results and uh, digest date and slurry uh, analysis. So if you've got muck or um, dung or cattle slurry or anything, you can get an analysis of that and actually put it into the into the software and then you can say how much you're going to apply and it uses RB209 values, I think, um, for availabilities and all the rest of it, NPK, sulfur, etc. Um, so there's a lot more, as I say, that, to it than we actually use. Um, but So just an example of um, an agronomy report there. So that's one of our fields of broccoli, just for an example. So at point A, the agronomist has walked through the crop and dropped a little pin at point A, um, and he's just done a very simple observation there, saying that the heads there are 50 mil, and then point B just that happens to be a south-facing part of the field, 60, 70 mil heads. But this is purely just an example of what can be done. So that could be anything from a patch of yellow rust in wheat or you know anything at all, a flooded area, a block drain or whatever. And that record is there for, you know, that's backed up for um for records purposes, etc. Um yeah, problem locations, as I said. Uh so another quick example. I'll just run through this top to bottom, basically. So this is a, a spray plan. Um, I don't know how many of you guys do your own agronomy recs or spray records. I do some of ours. I do it all for the veg, which is um, it's just easier that way, essentially, because of the way the crops are planted, etc. So uh, at the top, you've got the, the target area, top left target area. You can do headlands only or end rigs only and then whole field or just the middle of the field. You can set up uh, if you want to do, for example, a... Um, a grass weed spray on end rigs, you can set that to end rigs only, and then you can actually type in what width of end rig you're at. So, for example, a 24 meter spray of um, um, a grass weed spray, I don't know, topic for wild oats, for example, or something like that. Uh, and it'll calculate that area of the field if it's a 24 meter headland. Um, plan name, which you can make up, and then the plan date and the proposed application date. Then the next block down is the fields that you want to spray with all of their areas and the total area for spraying there at the bottom, 14.7 hectares in this example. Then you go on to the spray products. So um, I've got fungicide and some nutrition there, slug pellets. You can select the product and then the little, the eye um, information icon is very handy. So if you click on that, it shows you like the active ingredient it's like a cut down version of the chemical label, essentially. Uh, so that's really handy. Um, and then, yeah, your rate, as Neil mentioned earlier, is really handy for uh, basically you, once you make the plan, you can audit the plan um, and it'll keep you right on your total max dose and all the rest of it. So if I have if I put Revis on one of the fields already, it'll flag that up and say that you've past your max and uh, your max field dose, things like that. Then the right hand side, you've got the reason for use, um, which is, yeah, that's important for record keeping as well. So then down at the bottom, you've got water rate and spray quality operator and machine. Um, I think that is it, yeah. Um, so yeah, just the kind of up, um, yeah, rundown of, the business and what we are using our tools and software for. Um, hopefully that's given a, a decent insight to why we use it. Uh, and hopefully I'll answer some questions now on on that uh, software anyway. 
Okay. Thank you, Hamish. Um, one question I had just there on your previous slide, you said that the little information button gives you information on the um, chemical label, basically a shortened version of the chemical label. Do you have to add that in yourself every time you use a new product? I'm thinking in the um, cattle manager I use at home, for example, if I add a new medicine product that I've used, I have to go and find the active ingredient and, you know, withdrawal periods and all that stuff. Do you have to add that yourself or is that all preloaded? No, it does, it does it all itself. The database is absolutely huge. So I can literally start typing, uh, say, Revis, for example. I could start typing REV and it'll come up with Revis and it'll, it'll yeah, you don't have to do any of that. It's all there already. So it's got all the different brand product names and everything. You're not needing to know yeah. what, what I, chemical active ingredient is. Yeah, it's very good for updating when a product, um, one map number of a product gets revoked, the system will remove it so that when you search, it'll come up with the most up-to-date product and products that are able to be used on the crop that you're applying to. Okay, that's useful to know. Okay, so we've had a few questions come in um first of all there was two for you neil about yeah. the, the the prices um i should have said at the start as well as the webinars i'm actually writing a publication at the moment which will also be available on the FAS website which is www.fas.scot and um, that should be available in november and what i've done is created a matrix of all the different software options with some um, of their features and prices so i should say that most of the packages are much of a muchness for price to be honest um gatekeeper uh, i just looked up this now while um, hamish was talking is 323 pounds per year for up to 249 hectares and it seems to be that that's for multiple users you don't pay for each additional user it's just a one-off fee whereas the telus green light grower that we're seeing on the screen at the moment is 265 pounds per year up to 500 hectares but you have to pay 95 pounds for each additional user so in Hamish's scenario, Hamish, have you got a few operators using different tablets? So you're having to pay the £95 a few times? Yeah. Um, so we've got like um, basically three main users. So it would be myself and the farm owner and well, one or two agronomists. And then the level below, I think, would be the sprayer operator, for example. Okay. Yeah. So you're paying per user on top of your per year subscription? Yeah, we'll add users, yeah. Yeah, so um, I guess that depends on how many people in, um, the person that asked the question, how many people in your business you've got, it might be more expensive to, to have one of the options that you have to pay for multiple users, but if it's just one user, then it might be the cheaper option, but um, they do seem to all be much of a muchness by the time you consider adding in additional users and depending on the size, size of your farm. Um, Christopher Wilson's asked, um, can you use GLGM, which is presumably your green light grower manager, tell us whatever it's called now, um, for Lee Wraps. Uh, yes. Yeah, there is a Lee Wrap. It will give you the, um, if you have entered in that there is a water course in the field, there is that option and then it will give you the Lee Wrap for that chemical. But if you haven't okay. told it that there is a, a burn needing it, then it won't be and, and kind of related to that, can you add grass margins to the fields? Yeah, you can, because you can split the field into multiple cropping. So you would just treat a grass margin as a grass margin as a separate crop from whatever's in the body of the field. So you just put it. So it would just reduce the cropped. Yeah, just reduce the cropped area. Reduce the crop area and then have a grass area and crop area. I don't know if everybody else is frozen. Oh no, just me. Um, so Hamish, for your your business, then what would you say is the main benefits to you using these software packages over the older paper versions? Um, one of one of the big things is the um, sending the spray records directly to the spray operator's iPad. Essentially, that's just taking away paper and uh, human error, etc. Um, it speeds things up. I mean, we're doing. The sprayer is a busy machine. It'll be spraying different blocks of vegetables and then going to cereals and then going to potatoes and doing a lot of different things. Um, so, yeah, him to receive those wirelessly is a massive pro. Um, 
Also, I just think the usability of green light grower management is really good. So it can be slightly time consuming putting in all the crops and sowing dates and things. But as I said, the more you put in, the more you get out. Um, yeah, I would say that's those two things are the, the best, uh, the biggest pros for us anyway. And from a practical side, having these tablets in the tractors for anyone that doesn't have any of these softwares or per perhaps um, has them, but they've just got them desktop based. If you're using the tablet in the tractor with the app on it, do you need to have 4G signal at the time or can the operator work kind of offline and then when they come back into the farm or wherever they can upload it? Uh, yeah, exactly that. So they can they can just go into an area with internet, uh, like office Wi-Fi and synchronize it for the day ahead and then disappear and it's all there for them. Okay. You can also, um, I say that's a pro for us, but you can also print out a paper plan if if people prefer a pre a paper printout um it can do that as well if preferred yeah. so if people don't have tablets and don't want to invest in them then they could they could just yeah. still print off the, the spray lines or whatever but yeah. i guess a lot of the tablets now they're not that expensive you can get some relatively cheap ones that yeah if you put them in a good case they're they're fine in the, fine in the tractor yeah and I suppose just going back to the last question as well about Lee wraps the spray plan it produces has um if you print it in color, um, it has you know red warnings like lee wrap um, or ditch or grass margin. But as Neil says, you have to put that in uh, to get that information back out. If you know what I mean. And also, yeah. where where the chemicals, the chemical database has the chemical lee wraps as well. So that's all stored, and that'll come up on the spray plan. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um um, if there's any further questions, feel free, please, to, to type them into the, the Q&A now. Um, at the same time, I've just launched a, a poll here and just gives us a little bit of feedback on tonight's webinar. Um, you'll also be sent a um, feedback questionnaire. And we'd be really grateful if you have time to fill that in as well. If you fill in the feedback questionnaire, you'll be entered into our monthly draw to win a nice goodie hamper. So it's always worth doing that. Um, and any questions or comments please feel free to send us through those on the feedback forms and um, if there's any further questions just now feel free to pop them in the chat and it doesn't look like it so I just want to say a big thank you to Hamish tonight for joining us um, and talking us through his business and the software that he uses and um, I've seen other questions just come in in the snow so we'll just have a look at that before we finish up um, the best way to add field maps to green light grower um go in when you set up green light grower management you will put in uh basically it's like dropping a pin for where your farm holding is you can then enter in um you know a, field, a rural payments field id um, and then or uh, there's a option to add field boundary and add crop boundary on the field setup page. So you then zoom in to that grid reference defined by the rural payment field code. And you then outline the field boundary. And then if there's you know, a rock, rocky head with just rough grass that's not cropped, you can like map that out. So that you've just got a croppable area that's likely to be sprayed. So um, it's, once you get used to it, it's not too difficult to do, but the first few times you do it, it's quite a long-winded way of adding fields on. But once they're in and you've saved them, they're there, and then each year you just have to add a new crop boundary and define what the crop is. Okay, thank you, Neil. Um, so that's us for this evening. As I say, I will be shortly publishing the um, publication, which has got a breakdown and a, a table that you can look at for the various options we've discussed tonight, uh, as well as the um, livestock and financial software packages as well. Gives you the cost along with, um, is it app-based, is it web-based? Um, can you have multiple users? Or is there a helpline? And a lot of these packages nowadays, as, as both Neil and Hamish mentioned, have got um, YouTube channels and help documents that you can look up. So um, it's worth, if you're thinking of starting out for the first time or perhaps changing to a different one, um, watching them on YouTube just to see how they work, get familiar with the interface and consider 
trialing some of them you can get 30 day free trials for a lot of them as well so you can have a wee try before you buy so thank you very much for joining tonight's webinar